life. All right. Good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, citizens, you two's Pastor Dow. I'm uh, here with a lot of the elders in the ministry, a couple of few brothers, heads of home fellowships, assemblies. Uh, we are in Green Bay, Wisconsin. So you can tell that um, with the um, advent of the coronavirus, that all of us didn't mind traveling. Now, we're not going to do like this NBA basketball player did who mocked the virus, and then he turns around and gets up on a press conference and start touching everything, and, and then he ended up with the virus. Yeah, the day. Uh, you, know, you know, the book even says something about that, too, that fools make a mock at seeing it. You know what I mean? A lot of times people get arrogant and stuff because you can't see this virus. It, 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 it's it's uh, invisible. If it was visible to the naked eye, then we, we could all be able to fight it. But there are other methods and modes that we have to use to fight this. Now, the reason why we're here this morning is trying to, to speak to y'all, maybe on a, a var you know, variety of topics and subjects. You know what I mean? Um, you can actually uh, type in down there below if you actually want us to answer some of your questions. Uh, we hit that too. Uh, but there's quite a few things going on in, in the world. As a matter of fact, uh, we have gotten word, and we continue to keep hearing word through the grapevine, that... Um, America is getting ready to be quarantined uh, for up to 30 days or four weeks. Um, and some people are saying it's as impending as, as early as Monday, what the world calls Monday. Now, my question is, is uh, now, you know, first of all, number one, everybody's going to be fine. Those that have actually paid attention uh, to us and the, especially the people in the prepping community. Um, but many of you that are caught out there in those population centers, it's bad. Have y'all seen those videos where people are fighting over toilet paper? Mm -hmm. Literally fighting over toilet paper. And this goes back to something that we spoke many, many years ago. Can you trust humanity? Can you trust your next door neighbor? Whenever you have something that's going on that's actually going to challenge the survival and the upkeep of your family, um, can you trust the person next to you? Now, personally, I think that it's the heightened sense of selfishness to not prepare when you had opportunity to prepare. I mean, look, have we not learned from these natural disasters what happens every single time? It happens all of the time. Whenever something happens, everybody makes a run on the stores. They take up either all the water. They take up uh, all the gas. Uh, now they're taking up all the toilet paper, all of Antibacteria, uh, soap, antibacteria uh, wipes, antibacteria squirt sprays, and everything else. And it's all a news media frenzy. Uh, now, I guess we can thank this virus right here for making Americans a hell of a lot more conscious uh, about being, you know, clean rather than running around looking nasty. Because that's a nasty looking people. You guys can see yeah. these folks. These folks are nasty. They look like viruses themselves. <laughs> uh, but, but, but I tell you, it, it, it's a sad situation when all we do is just try to give you information for you to just prepare. And all you have to do is, what, we say at least six months, yep. six months. Because you have to change the way you live. You can't get it through your head. If America shuts down for 30 days, you're not going to be eating three square meals a day. And you, you might, you're going to have to learn how to adjust because they're just saying 30 days. That's not to say that, that the president and anybody can't impose a restriction and continue on keeping on a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody's going to feel the pinch. Though. The stock market is feeling it right now. And, and um, there's a lot of rich people that's getting ready to go bankrupt. Us poor folks and middle class folks, we ain't got to worry about because we have no money in the bank anyway. Mm -hmm. So it is not going to affect us any at all, but we do have a garden out back. Yeah. Uh, and we have things that are stored up. And of course, you know, wise man, he perceives the evil and he prepares his house. Now, the book teaches us, the Bible does, it teaches us a lot of things that people just simply don't want to hear today. Um, it, it teaches us that there's nothing new under the sun. It teaches us the things that was and shall be again. It teaches us to seek for the old paths, search for the old paths. And of course, on um, Patreon, I never, I still have not gotten to it yet. I did a video on modernization. Um, and, and we're watching how everything in us actually kicks and fights to maintain this paradigm that we have because we simply don't want to be inconvenient. Now, if the president imposes 
or the federal government imposes a 30 day lockdown, you're not going to have any choice. And of course, most of you people want to talk about civil liberties and freedoms and all that. Can, you can forget all that when a pandemic is in, in force uh, because actually it's always been in our culture. It's our custom. Anytime somebody has some type of infectious disease, you know, for us to actually isolate them and keep them and quarantine them and keep them away uh, from the general populace so that other people don't contract it and continue to keep on spreading. And you know just as well as I do uh, that Americans are uncouth. We're rebellious, stubborn, stiff neck. We're not about to do anything to anybody tell us until it comes to our own backyard. Then when it comes to our own backyard, we want to bellyache and cry, moan, squall, ball over the reason why uh, mama died or granddad died and all this other stuff because nobody wanted to pay attention, which is a sad situation. Now, they've actually restricted travel from China. Now, I, I personally think, you know, think about this for a second. We're over $22 trillion in hot as a country, mm -hmm. and probably at last I think, I think we owe China like eight bill, eight trillion dollars or something like that, just in debt alone, which is never going to be paid. And, um, and and so we we don't stop all flights coming from Asia over to this country. My question is, looking at Italy and this being ravaged, France, France is literally being ravaged. They already on shutdown. Mm -hmm. Why is it that it took so long for them to 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 actually? restrict flights coming in from Europe. Even Africa beat us restricting the Europeans from coming into that country. Mm -hmm. All right, me. And now look at this. Nobody thought that the Europeans could actually contract this disease. No more than anything, it's the actual uh, melanated folks are the ones who actually have it a, a hell of a lot less on a grand scale than anybody. Yep. So could this be some type of pandemic on a global scale uh, because of the uh, atrocities that have gone on in the past? Or as I like to say, um, in today's vernacular, has the chickens or all the chickens coming home to roost? <laughs> it could be that. It literally could be that. We could digress all over the place. But you need to start thinking, what are you going to do? What are you going to do if they do impose a quarantine for 30 days? Now, I'm going to tell you how I think this scenario is going to play out. For the first week, people would do okay. Even if they didn't prepare, they'll do okay. The second week, the majority of Americans are not used or accustomed to fasting. And they are spoiled mm -hmm. and they're going to eat. And if they don't have any discipline about them at all, they're going to eat up all whatever they got in the house, their reserves within the first week or week and a half. All right. So two weeks, that's when people start getting antsy. Three weeks, that's when you better start worrying about your stuff. That's what you better start when people start capitalizing <coughs> and, and um um, off of your fortunes because of their misfortunes and their refusal to be able to prepare. Um, if it goes four weeks and there's no uh, green light in sight to say that this is going to be lifted, you get ready to look at uh, a chaos, mm -hmm. a world without rule of law because they don't have enough police force out there to govern all these ungoverned people. They don't have it. So again, now comes are you prepared? Not only are you prepared naturally, spiritually, but are you prepared physically to be able to defend your homestead? Because remember, even the Constitution talked about we have a right to defend ourselves against all enemies, foreign and domestic. In case you don't know what domestic is, that means your neighbors, right. your neighbors next to you or the people next to you, because you'll get these people that will band together in mobs. And and y'all forbid if this thing was to go three months, and nobody can go nowhere. You can definitely forget it then. We got nothing but chaos. And what's the New World Order model? Order out of chaos. And they're going to impose something. So there's all type of scenarios on the horizon developing right before our very eyes. I don't know personally um, which way it's going to go. We can call it as we see it. But I do know this. I don't trust um, in the benevolent nature of so-called Americans. Nope. Do y'all? No, sir. I don't trust any of them at all, especially where I live. Yeah. I don't trust any at all. I just got finished reading a news article that out in California, uh, there's this melanated man that y'all commonly call him black man. He just literally got sick and tired of racism, so he just went out and started killing white folks. Mm. He said, I'm just so tired of it. I'm just tired of it. He just went out and started wow. killing white folks, and, and, um, and it's sad because most people, whenever you bring up racism, it's hot. 
a topic it is and stuff. Nobody wants to paint a, a broad brush and like to condemn everyone. But what happens when the majority is silent? Whenever all this is, is starting to take, I mean, taking place and happening mm -hmm. and it's personal to the person, what happens then and when it's totally ignored? Yeah. When people's pleas and, cry, and cries are totally ignored? I mean, because it's too late to be dropping tears when you should have done something about it whenever somebody decides to pull um, you know, one of these things where these uh, killers, they get uh, sick and tired of their supervisor at work and then they go mm -hmm. shoot up the whole entire job. Right. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I'm saying? Because I mean, that's what white people do. They actually, when they get sick and tired of stuff, they go, they don't, they, black folks are different. Black folks, if I'm, and I'm just using that for YouTube and, and um, for, for clarity. If somebody does something wrong to us, we go directly after that person. Yeah. That's systemic. We see that. Mm -hmm. Now we know Mao and all them, they try to break the tradition and stuff, you know, because and you have to understand because they had an alternative lifestyle too. So they already had, mm -hmm. you know, some, some, uh, um, they were pretty People derelict in their minds. He had mm -hmm. mental problems and issues and stuff. But then if uh, somebody does something to a, a white person on the job, for some reason, they're not content at getting a person that actually offended them. They got to go get every single body in sight. And I like to know what is the reason and what is the cause for that type of bizarre behavior. I said personally, well, it's cold up here in Green Bay. There's snow on the ground. Uh, it's starting to melt a little bit there. It don't look, look like it's taking a sweet time to leave, too. Um, can the coronavirus live up here? If it can, it's a bad dude because it's cold as it is up here. Um, but my question to you is, and and you just got finished traveling around. You you driving a truck right now, all over the place and stuff. What does the landscape look like out there uh, as far as this coronavirus um, and your travels, Elder Mitch? When it comes to truck drivers, from what I've seen, truck stops they are business as usual. Uh, when it comes to them, they don't. Mm -hmm. They're not worried. They're not concerned. Uh, I don't see anything now. What I do see is when I'm near a Walmart, when I'm near a Sam's, when I'm near a Costco. Or something like that you see lines lines of people all out the door uh, when you go inside uh, shelves are empty uh, no water uh, no paper towels no toilet tissue no disinfectants no hand wipes no Clorox wipes uh, things of that nature that's what you see so there's a panic and a run on the stores uh, people are grabbing up all kind of food uh, for rations with uh, dry goods uh, that's what you see but uh, as far as truckers go, they 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 different type of mindset. They they looking at money to be made. I'm getting text messages and I'm getting emails as we sit here as you're talking right now. Yeah, and people are asking uh, for dry vans. Why? Because mm -hmm. they need to transport certain things because mm -hmm. things are running low. Mm -hmm. You know, because you know uh, I don't know if anybody's ever stocked stores before, but what they do is they have a little handgun and they, you have an estimate about how much uh let's say for instance pallets of water are sold a week and you order around that amount to keep it replenished well mm -hmm. so the it's inventory totally they didn't they didn't foresee this amount of water being put off the shelves so and all of a sudden no one can keep their shelves stocked so now they're calling you've got brokers shippers distributors contacting different carriers including myself uh to move move items Mm -hmm. Ooh, we need we need to fill these shelves because and so right now what's going to happen is uh, you know you're going to have like a temporary rise and and capital being made but then it's going to dip again mm -hmm. because it, it, it's it's so unstable right now so that's that's more so what I see on on the road but as far as drivers go or the truck stops things a lot of things will stop oh another thing is uh, people are jacking up prices mm -hmm. that's price, price gouging oh yeah, yeah. price gouging. Uh, and they know you need it. Same thing happened during Harvey in Houston. Uh, same thing happened during Rita. Okay. Same thing happened during Ike. Same thing happened during, you know, so pretty much this is a, I don't want to say, it's not a natural disaster, but this is, you know, a sickness, obviously, uh, epidemic, pandemic that's going around. So, but at the end of the day, there is an issue that is affecting uh, citywide, statewide, nationwide, you know, and this one is global wide or, you know, worldwide. So uh, people are going to take advantage of what people need and what people desire and what people want. And they're going to jack up the price and they see an opportunity to make money. So you got, it's pretty wicked. Mm -hmm. You know, my, 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 my thoughts is I hear you speak about this. And again, if you listen to us, because you think about 
you know, it's obvious that when you come to my channel, you see Pastor Dow, so you know it has something to do with ministry. And of course, I believe that the, it, the, rather than people having titles and positions, those titles and positions are there for a reason. They exist because you are there to actually be the eyes and the ears and the discernment for the people going forward so they can make better choices and decisions based on the information that is presented to them. Mm -hmm. And I say that because how many people out there after listening to what Elder Mitch just got finished saying, of course you gotta have water, right? Good clean water. And you can't get it from the miserable water supply mm -hmm. that's full of all type of uh, uh, every drug that you can think of, that filtration system just simply can't get out. Right, true. How many of y'all got a big Berkey at home? You see what I mean? How I many y'all have a, 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 a reverse osmosis under your sink or something like that? Or, or a, a distiller? I mean, all of these things, are. this is commonplace. Because they're not talking about the grid going down. Mm -hmm. They're talking, we're talking about that shipments coming in from China. And President Trump just got finished speaking the other day, and he says that he just got finished signing an executive order that says, buy American. Now, most people don't know what that means. When you say buy American, you know that China actually controls 80% of our pharmaceuticals that come into this country. 80%. Somewhere between 70 and 80% of the pharmaceuticals come in this country come from China. Now, if we got a pandemic going on like this here in this particular country, how many times do you think that this particular administration or the administration out there is going to depend on uh, imports? I mean, exports of goods and services coming in when we have Americans producing the same thing. You see what I mean? Because y'all remember how Walmart started, right? They started, now most people in this generation, the millennials, they don't even realize that Walmart at one time was an American-only store. You would only see American products in there with the flag on almost every single thing. But then they became child mark. <laughs> and now, and now we look at it. It, it. It's a weeping how going all across the land right now. So preparedness is something that should have been in the mindset of the people that ministers, leaders, preachers, teachers, elders, deacons, whoever it is. It should have been in the mindset if you've been able to disseminate the information to the people so they could have been prepared because most people are just simply a wide asleep today. Today, people love entertainment. I was talking with the elders this morning. At the table. I said, what are they going to do on these sport talk shows when there ain't no sports going on in America right now? What are they going to talk about? Are they going to resurrect Jordan back in the 80s and stuff and replay Show stuff and talk about it? Show the classics. <laughs> <laughs> but you see what I mean? Things are inevitably going to change. As a matter of fact, um, Get Jeremiah, somebody get Jeremiah, get Jeremiah 616. Jeremiah 616. And while we are on this Jeremiah 616 right here, what is wrong? What is wrong with us today when we get so steeped in these modern day conveniences that we forget the simplicity that we should be operating in? Anybody got an answer on that? Mm. You see what I mean? That's what it's designed to do. Yeah, because see, modern day conveniences are not there to keep you sober. Mm -mm. They're there to actually make you keep more you dependent. Yeah, exactly. To, to where, because remember, if even in this country, they believe in free market capitalism. And in order to keep this particular paradigm going, this particular institution going, you've got to learn how to produce. Mm -hmm. If you can't produce, you don't have any capitalism. You don't have the Keynesian theology or ideology of, of actually making a lot of money. You just simply don't. Jeremiah 6.16 Thus says Yahweh, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old path. Ask for the what? Old path. Ask for the old path. That's a loud alarm. Boy. <laughs> That's, the doorbell. That's the doorbell. I thought it was on the hour, man. Doorbell. <laughs> but as for the old path, who's doing that today? But I tell you what, with this martial law or, or this uh, quarantine that's going to be imposed, yeah. you ain't going to have nothing but the old paths in front of you. Right. Because you can't, I mean, think about this. You, If you get on that road and you decide to drive down and you're going to go to a store because you done ran out of everything and they already done imposed quarantine, then you're going to have that guy with the bubble gum machine. He's going to pull you over. 
And then more likely they're going to get into your back pocket and impose some type of levies and fines against you, thereby indenturing you, putting you even more in greater debt, simply because you were not disciplined enough to even obey. And here we are in the wintertime, and you can't go out and get the, who has a wood cook stove, an old cast iron wood stove in the house to where you can actually cook a hot meal in case the electricity go down. Even in this right here, the book tells us no matter how modern we get, no matter who we think we are, cell phones, Facebook, Internet, uh, TV, satellite, whatever it is, always to keep our mind on the what? Old the old past. No matter what you, no matter what you come to financially, no matter you want what you come to prosperity, you should always have a contingency plan. Mm -hmm. You should always have the old paths to be able to fall back on, so you don't forget where you come from. Mm -hmm. Read on. Where is the good way? Where is the what? Good way. Where is the good way? And walk therein. Now. Today, is this the good way what we're in right now? This ain't the good way when we walk in. The old paths is the good way. I'm going to give you some old paths that's going to really pee a lot of people off. You know, growing a garden. Yeah. Um, of course, if you grow a garden, you have to get out there and weed it. That's right. Yeah. And of course, you weed it, you have to water it. Yeah. You water, you got to maintain it. You got to know how to sucker plants. Uh, and when you get finished with that, you got to harvest. Yeah. We get finished harvest and stuff. Process. Yeah, you got to process the food and then can store it. it. First of all, you got to learn how to can it because, <laughs> right. you know, canning today is just like um, learning the theory of relativity. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's really true because mm. how many people today, the wives, know how to can? Mm. The only can we know is go get that can off the shelf in the grocery store. Right, yeah. Thereby, they made us dependent right. upon them. Because, see, a long time ago, the poor folks, they weren't affected by the Great Depression. Not at all. They didn't even know it was a depression mm -hmm. because they never skipped a beat because they had their own garden, raised their own livestock. They were ready and good to go. Yep. They had a store. You know, that's where the store, that's where we get the word, root word store wrong. It came from storage. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And they used to have a, a, a root cellar that they would store food in. And those foods in those mason jars. Yeah, yeah. And they were canning. them. They weren't in these little aluminum cans or these, these mm -hmm. iron cans that we have today when you go out to this, on the shelves and you pick them up. But see, think about that. Who is even thinking about trying to do that today? With, look, we are, look what we've come to sure. today. Yeah. Everybody manufactures and does everything for us. Mm -hmm. We don't have to do anything ourselves anymore. And look what it's done. It's actually done made us dependent upon the very system that is built to continue to keep us in slavery. Mm -hmm. Shadow slavery, don't care who you are. Black, white, red, yellow, blue, purple, green, brown, makes no difference who you are. Mm -hmm. This system is designed to control you. And I often say this, if I say it once, I say it a thousand times, and this is what I've said. If you were the devil, what would you do to control the people? And the way you will control the people is by food. The first sin entered in by the lust of the eye because of food. Food. Yep. Call it fruit, call it apple, call it whatever you want to be. The temptation was food. And when that belly hit that spine, guess what the first thought's going to be in your mind? Food. So the old paths is what we should be seeking for and looking for. And when we find them, keep going. And ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. That's the condition we're in today. We ain't going to walk in it. We don't have to walk in it. Well, guess what? If you don't want, you choose not to walk in it, then guess what? Walking is hunger. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. The old paths of from the camp, you know, this day and time, you have everything in this society is, is geared around convenience mm -hmm. and everything to take the work out of everything. And people are heavily dependent upon that. There's a uh, Things where people don't even get necessarily need to go to grocery stores. You can get everything sent to you. You can get have, you know, Amazon. You go online, have all your groceries sent to <laughs> the door. You can to go to the grocery store and have them shop for you, and you, you know, you load it up and take it with you. So, I mean, it's it's just everything about being lazy, taking work out of everything. So nobody wants to do anything uh, these days. It's all centered around convenience, convenience, 
convenience, you know what I mean? So this is a bad state. And uh, you talk about washing clothes by hands or doing things like the hang clothes out on the line. People look at that and frown upon them like, what, what you doing? You have a garden. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, I talked to where, I, where I'm at uh, in Kentucky, there's a lot of, you know, people that eventually, they, they had farms growing up, they had farms or their parents had farms and they, they shunned it, they hated it because they said it was just too much work. And so those people there, they don't want nothing to do with farming whatsoever. I'm like, what? You realize that the, the knowledge and the, the, the know-how that you have and you don't want to do nothing with it? So right. to take care of yourself to survive, you know, your family. Mm -hmm. These people don't want anything to do with that that lifestyle and those old past that we're talking about. It's, it's gone. How do you the people? Bro, Steve, you here? Yes, sir. Um, what what is the environment like right now up in New York? New York is actually pretty domesticated as of now. Right now, the people are acting like everything is normal. People are laughing yeah. about getting water. They think the shipments are going to continue coming very domesticated. Um, being that I work in the hospital, in the ICU, they've been prepping us a lot about the coronavirus and they're preparing reverse, you know, engineering rooms, negative pressure rooms for people. Mm -hmm. The hospitals are getting ready, but the people, they're not taking it seriously at all. <laughs> there was this lady, man. She, uh, one of the brother posted on social media. So she was on a talk show. She was talking, basically saying that, you know, she don't like her ass and stuff like that. And she's not worried about it. She's not, don't care about germs and stuff like that. So you see two different extremes. You see one on one and you see people that are really fearing. And then you see others that are really, you know, they don't give a shit whatsoever. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So there's a lot of that going on. I guess it's not going to really hit the mind until something, you know, really take play over in it, in the midst of it, uh, either quarantine or uh, one of those situations. But. Well, a lot of people don't have reverence for life until it hits their yeah. own backyard and somebody dies in their family or something close to them. Right. What's the environment like down in Texas, bro, Greg? The environment is kind of similar to what Brother Steve was talking about. We get all the shipping scene. We got ship channels. We got all kind of, we got all the barges coming in. So everybody thinks the economy is going to be fine in Texas since we're the wealthiest state. And uh, they, they're not thinking anything of it. Now, you do have your preppers around there in the countryside that are getting ready. Mm -hmm. And so what happens in Texas all the time, commonly, I'm pretty sure in other cities as well, is once somebody sees some one person going out here getting a bunch of stuff, they start questioning, then everybody else is doing the same thing, like like cattle. So it's pretty much a, you know, a lot of preppers out there, a lot of uh, a lot of folks who probably either don't care, or think it's like a, a farce, and some other, but some people are pretty much getting prepped up. Right? Some people are. I think the thing is overall is we're really not. And one thing that you know I've been down here visiting since I've been driving this truck and. Uh, one thing that I've, I've spoken to all the brothers about, the women about, and uh, has been, we're not really so focused on the virus, but more so the people, how they're going to function, how they're going to act, right. and also what this government plans to do. We don't know what they're going to do. And so it's the inconvenience and that pastor is sitting here speaking about, and that's the whole reason for the preparedness. And cause what are you going to do? Because we can't control what we're at in this bondage out here. You know what I mean? Stuck where we are. And people have to be ready for uh, things that they so it's getting to the point where it's almost too late for this whole little four week quarantine, especially depending on when they plan to impose it. Mm -hmm. If you haven't already been doing it and hadn't just been a way of life, then you're gonna be screwed. You know, uh, our grandparents, you know, the old past the generations that went on before us, canning was a normal thing, you know, uh, putting things away through the window was a normal thing, growing like a little small cart was a normal thing. Uh, all these things were normal. Uh, now you get to today's time and uh, they call you all kinds of stupid names. Uh, what's wrong? What you afraid of? And what you scared of? That's how they talk. You see what I'm saying? And I put it to you like this. When we went through that hurricane, a few hurricanes we done went through, we, I've done had situations where men came banging at the door, demanding certain things. And I'll be honest, I'm ha so happy I had my first gun. All I had to do was brandish it. They walked away. You see what I'm saying? Uh, us men were up. At night, we ran a generator during the day, we shut it off at night, and we listened. And we had we on shifts, two brothers up at a time, listening, watching, while wow, and all the women and children upstairs. So this is how we thought, this is how we were thinking, this is what we were pushing for. And we didn't allow any of our sisters in the assembly during Harvard to go to one of their little camps, mm. uh, Red Cross stuff. They were trying to evacuate them, and uh, we went and got them. They were on a boat. We took them off of it. We walked in about four, three to four feet of water all the way, blocks away from the house. Brought them there with their luggage and everything. Mm -hmm. And we had a hot meal every night. Right now, every yeah. night. 
good. Right now, we got a lot of families. Speak up a little bit, bro, bro. Uh, right now, we got a lot of family talking to us about what's going on and everything. But we have a lot of this last minute mindset going on. Uh, this, this has happened before down in Texas when we had Hurricane Rita, which came nothing but a month after Hurricane Katrina. And so we've seen millions of people trying to shoot up north to Dallas and whatever. It took about 48 hours for some people to get up. Well, when we got to our dad's house, our whole entire family shot to my dad's house because they knew he had a big house. But next thing you know, once it was all over and the smoke's clear, they go back to life as it is, as if that would never happen again. Mm. And so this last, this last minute mindset is pretty bad off. And right now, as we speak, we, me, and, me and my brother were talking to our dad this morning. And uh, my dad even said to himself, it's, it's sad that a lot of our family, they live in the dream world where they don't think anything will ever happen until it does. So this last minute mindset is one of the, one of the, one of the most worst mindsets we can see today. That normalcy bias in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no Nigga Miguel, what is it like in Missouri? As of right now, Shepard, it is, whole Kansas City is on a state of emergency. We've already had two confirmed cases. One of the cases actually at the hospital that I work in. So people are definitely in a hysteria. Mm. Uh, we've gotten stories that 